All right, this is Mobile Gamer Nerd, and we are back with another free-to-play Mystery Shard only video for the Raid Shadow Legends. So today, we're going to be doing a quick overview guide of Ice Golem's Peak. It's the one dungeon that I haven't done yet, just because I honestly, even now, don't have a very specific team that I use to beat it. I don't really farm it, but I don't really farm a lot of the dungeons, so it's a little bit... It's, it's almost not necessary for me right now, but if you really like farming gear and you really want to get through these things, yeah, you might want to you know work on it. Now, the good news is, is that the teams required for this don't really change. Like it's, it's almost like you're basically just going to be upgrading heroes that can get through this. And the same heroes are almost basically almost the same ones are used throughout the whole fight. Um, there's a few heroes that become a little more useful in here. But there's nothing in here that's like really earth shattering that I would be showing you. It's more about surviving and sometimes you die. That's really just how it works. So we're going to do the same thing we did on a lot of the other videos. And we're just going to kind of run through each stage a little bit here and there. We'll skip through some stages because some of them obviously aren't going to be that interesting like the first stage. So either way, we're going to go into stage one. Now, if you're playing this normally, more than likely you're going to have a starter. Just for fun, we're going to bring in Galek, in case you didn't pick Kale. I mean, not everyone picks Kale. All right, you're going to have probably Valerie. We'll pull her out. Who else we got? Who's our starting five? Here we go. We got Spirit Hose. We got her. And we've got her. So this is basically what you've got going on. In the beginning, you're probably going to want to keep your lead as your starting hero, mainly because that extra HP can stop you from dying. All right, so let's go in. Now, obviously, we're going to be super overpowered, as always, not really anything crazy. Now, the only thing you got to worry about here, really, is the boss. The waves are not usually that hard. They're a little bit annoying. You're going to have some reflect damages, things like that. But more than likely, you shouldn't have too much of a problem here. The ads are going to die probably in one or two hits just from you playing, just from autoing. All right. Now, this team can pretty much get you through. I, I don't even really need to show a lot of it. We'll skip ahead. I don't really think there's any point in this in this dungeon. Honestly, I could probably just skip ahead to stage 20 with this team and maybe just switch out one hero and make it a little more reasonable. Like that's basically how much Ice Golem really changes. It's not it's not really a big change comparative to some of the other dungeons that you may see. There's no big change here. The only thing you have to do is level and build, get your masteries, get your you know better gear, get your five, six star gear as you progress through the dungeon. And that should be more than enough to get you through it. Let's go to stage five. Literally, this team is all you need. And I get and I get that, like I said, my team's overpowered, but even at level 40s and 50s here, you're gonna have zero problem here. You know, even level 30s, because that's basically where you'll be at when you first start. So level 30s will be able to beat this with no problem especially if you are following the build your starter hero to 60 as fast as you can. Because at this point, you might have, you know, maybe the first level not, but like after the first level when you're like kind of stopping to do a few quests, you should have Galek to level 40, like pretty quickly, to be honest. You're going to level him up to 30 almost within the first probably hour, and then you're going to probably four-star him pretty quickly. Uh, and you will have the three-star attack gear on him more than likely and that'll be it you'll be using him as your main source he might be the only one that survives but who cares i mean you've, you're probably going to use uh war priest there's a couple of heroes you can use let's see um let's put open let's open up our okay include master vault so that's fine let's just say you have him uh who else do we got here let's bring in some uh some boneheads let's bring in the bonehead the bonehead brigade uh here we go we got her you're gonna have her probably you'll probably have let's see who else is in here i'm gonna i'm if you haven't noticed i'm gonna try to make this video longer by doing things like what i'm doing right now problem is i have a ton of heroes to kind of dig through to find the ones that i need uh i don't know where he is you know let's just say you bring him in screw it let's bring him in i'm trying to find my ogre guy but I don't know where he, here he is. This guy you'll probably have. 
And then we'll bring in Spirit Host, because why not? She doesn't she does damage, but she's not crazy overbuilt like some of my other heroes. There we go. Start. So you'll probably have War Priest. Let's see how far this team can take you. Like you might have a random ass team. All right. And I, this is what I'm saying is that it don't matter because Galek's going to kill everything. Even at 50, he's going to wipe the floor with these guys. Even at 40, he's going to wipe the floor with these guys. See? No problems. You've got War Priest kind of coming in here, doing some things. And there you go. Problem solved. Let's see how far they can go. Let's move up to stage 10. And then eventually we'll switch over to the other team. And I, I just want you to see that it doesn't really matter. There's no, there's no like, oh God, I can't win. Like, you could bring in Conqueror in here. You can bring in Armager in here. Like, there's a bunch of heroes you can do with this with. As long as you have your main nuker really built and you have a healer that can heal you in case your team's getting, you know, really hurt by the main attack of the boss, you should have zero problems here. At least up until 10 to 13. I think that would be a reasonable area. And that's remember, this isn't just mean that you can jump in there like the first time you, you're playing and win. That's not what this is this means. What this means is is that if you are building your team while progressing through campaign in the beginning of the game, then these fights will progressively become easy as you move forward. This isn't like, oh, you're gonna win the first day after stage 13. It's not that's not what this means. All right. So don't think you're gonna jump in. And immediately be this good. It's not gonna. It, that's not what is going to happen here. But I, this is just to show you that it doesn't really matter. Like I brought in the big team because they. That's just what I have. But yeah, these are all you know fifties and forties, and you got Spirit Host and Galact, which are two of the starting five that you should be building anyway, and they can get you through it. Let's say stage ten. Let's move forward a little bit. We want to up this a little bit. We'll go to. Let's see. We will do. You know, we'll do stage fifteen. Let's see what happens. Let's see if they can do it. I want to see how much a level 60 can force you to get through these dungeons by themselves. So he can't one-shot the ads anymore. So now we're getting into territory where you will have resistance. I think 15 is a pretty good marker for where you'll be at. 13 is where you need to be because that's when you start getting level 60 gear. So if you can beat 15... You're doing pretty good. You're doing okay. Because remember, 15, you're, we're talking like maybe like a month or two into quests. Like it's not like it jumps up in the first week. So we're doing in like, we're doing in 10 minutes what you would be doing in like a month or two, you know? So that's, uh, it's kind of changes things. Now, I'm going to assume people are going to start dying because. They're not going to be as strong with this with, without the shields. And his main attack is really where the problem is going to come in. But as you can see, these guys do pretty good. They're doing pretty good. They're, I mean, they're not doing great damage, obviously. She's, I mean, 4K for a crappy hero that's not even built ain't bad. See how much damage it does on, K on, a, on a Galek? There you go. So 15 is too much for this. So basically, I would say 13... Might be a good one. Let's go. Let's go see how 13 runs because I want to see how far a team like this can get you since we don't have anything else to talk about other than using the main team. So we'll see what kind of a team can do this. So this is the one that gets you six star gear. Let's see what happens. Well, can get you six star gear. It doesn't just give you six star gear. That would be nice, right? All right. Can he one shot the wave? He can. So that's usually a good sign as to of your power. If you can one shot the wave once you start getting past 15 unless you have insanely powered up heroes it doesn't matter how strong you are you're you're not one shotting the waves probably as you saw my galect is 60 and on 15 he couldn't even do it so and he's pretty strong he's, he's not like amazing but he's strong all right so the ad died pretty quickly we just need to make sure the ads are dead before. I learned that just recently that the ads add 50% ignore defense to the boss. So if you have two ads up, yeah, a hundred percent. So that wasn't bad at all. See?
And you technically, when you get to this point, should probably have better heroes than this. This is, well, maybe not your main team. Won't be as strong as like my Galek, but your team should average out across the board. And if you have a Reviver, then this won't be a problem. Like Grinner, um, if you happen to pull, what's her name? Uh, what the hell is that chick's name? The, the Void Legendary, I'm the Void Hero, not Legendary. She's rare. I never remember because Relic Tender. There's a couple of heroes that you can get. If you have Broadmaw, you could bring him in here if you fused him. So there's there's options. So there you go. Basically, Spirit Host and Galek can handle this up until stage 13, in which case you can start farming reasonably starred gear. All right. So there you go. Four to six star gear is yours with literally just two heroes and a couple of random, you know, knockoff heroes with level 12 gear that are level 50 and 40. Uh, actually, they might not even have that. They might be even worse, but they'll die. Who cares? You still win. If anything, if they do die every time and they don't help you, I would just bring food champions in here if you're going to farm it and then just bring those two in and, you know, kick some butt. But either way, it's not terrible. So now once we get into these stages, we'll go back into 15. You're going to want to start bringing in your main team. And by this point, you know, figure a good a good chunk of time has passed. So we're going to bring the main team in. Oh, man. All right. I, you know what's funny is that I always forget who I bring. Here we go. Her. Now, in this case, we're going to bring, just to see how it goes, we're going to bring Diabolist because I want the main team to kind of show. I want to see if they can what they can handle and what they can't. I believe we ran stage 20. I don't remember what stage it was. We did a test run on Diabolist versus Apothecary. And I feel like we only switched out one hero for... What the hell is her name? For Sill. Just because the reviving. And we had there was a better chance of us living because we were going to end up... We were ending up getting one-shotted sometimes. So Sill was basically the one that keeps us alive. Now, I did do a video on this moving forward into stage 21. I will more than likely be working on that this, in, you know, recent, soon. And eventually we can maybe do some videos from 20 to 25. We've already beaten Dragon. So we'll see where it goes. But as you can see, they're doing pretty well. It's not, this isn't, you know, rocket science. It's really just you building your heroes stronger every time you play. And if you're not focusing, if you're focusing on one hero at a time, eventually, if let's say you finish a hero once every two weeks, which is a lot of time, by the way, in the grand scheme of things, if it takes you a week, like, like right now, if I had got a, if I got a hero that I wanted to six star, I could conceivably do it in one week. From scratch. Yeah, see, in here, Apothecary would be a better option. But these guys can sort of heal themselves. Now, War Maiden, not so much. So she might die, but... I started switching heroes out around this point. This is when I started realizing that the main team was a little bit underwhelming. Let's put it that way. I'm actually surprised War Maiden is not dead right now. This is a shocking situation. See? No, we don't want that. There we go. Can we do it? Can we do it? Yes, we can. So there you go. This team can win. I have had teams where Valerie will basically be the last one standing and then kill the boss by herself. I would recommend that we put Apothecary in here in place of Diabolist just because of the outgoing damage. It's a little ridiculous, so it's a little bit harder to beat these. Um, now, from this point forward, this this fight becomes a little more difficult. As you can see, literally, we go from one-minute fights up to two. So the fights are going to be a lot longer. All right. You can see stage 21 took us 14 minutes because we don't have a set thing going on there, but... We had to take it slow because we were getting our butt handed to us. So this is when things really ramp up, all right? But we are going to work our way up. So 16, 17, I don't think much changes here. This is literally just 
you using the same team and surviving. I would say, you know, switch out Apothecary and go from there. Now, let's see what we have team set up. Do we have a Ice Golem 20? We do. So now this is the team that I was using for Ice Golem 20 to get through. We're going to remove him. And we're going to put in... We're going to put Kale back in. All right, so let's just say this is your team. You're going to start one... You're going to want to start putting apothecary in the lead reason being is that defense is very important in this fight unless you have really defensive heroes and heroes that can do ally protect and a whole bunch of other things that'll keep your team alive like shields uh miscreated monster would be good for stuff like this um definitely shield heroes that are really good all right but we don't have those heroes because this is a mystery shard only run so it's you know we're just we're just working with what we got so this is what we're going to do we're going to go into was it stage 18 this is from this point forward, Syl is really your best friend. Just because she's gonna be the one that helps keep your heroes alive long enough to beat the bosses and not get wiped in the waves. Because the waves are gonna start being a lot stronger. They're gonna start doing a lot more damage. They're gonna have more speed. They're gonna do annoying stuff, and they're gonna make your team and your life just a living hell. They're gonna make your team a living hell. But yeah, I would say around 16, 17 is when difficulty ramps up, but not ridiculously. But 18 is when stuff starts really getting to the point where you may or may not get your butt handed to you. Now, Dark Alhain could be useful in here. She does have the freeze ability, which will use her extra attack. The only downside is, is it does a lot of attack. So she might end up procking the Ice Golem to do his attack twice. Or to do some crazy stuff. And she will kill the ads, which is good. And there are going to be a few times in here. I think, I don't remember if it was stage 20, I think, where these guys do reflect damage and your heroes are going to kill themselves. So unless your nukers are killing the wave in one hit, you're probably going to want a reviver. But that's only if you're doing this on auto. If you're doing it manually, you could just use one hits until they die, and then you don't have that problem. But otherwise, yeah, you're going to be hitting reflect damage heroes. You'll see in a little bit. We're probably going to skip stage 19. Basically, 15 through 17 are the, the basic starting five heroes, and you can use Apothecary as a healer or any other healer reviver that you currently own that's really good. And you'll be able to get through 15, 16, 17, more than likely. 18, this is when it starts getting a little rough. The damage output's pretty high. The levels of the monsters get a little higher. So this is when having better heroes like Syl and things like that really help your team. And Valerie is good because she can... Valerie and Spirit Host are good for a couple reasons. One, you have heroes that can remove or or lower the debuffs that your teams are getting. Those, the heal reduction and defense down can crush your team. Literally crush it. So if he does that move when everybody has defense down, you're done. There you go. Decreasing turn meter is always good. And the other good thing is that Spirit Host can heal herself back up. And Valerie's very defensive. At least if you've built her the way that I built her on my Champion Spotlight video. She's very defensive. She's very good at not dying. She just doesn't do any damage. And she can get you a shield for when he uses his big attacks. And Smite. This is why Sill's great for that smite. Hopefully he uses his attack now. He's not going to. He's going to wait until the debuff, uh, until our block debuffs is uh, gone. There you go. He should be doing his attack soon. Maybe he just likes me today. I can't say that's, that's true any other day. Because he never likes me. There you go. And having stuns 
or provokes are really helpful for the ads. It stops them from using their debuffs. So decrease turn meter, all those things are very helpful. See, that heal reduction is terrible because now he can't re-heal re himself. Sil can't heal him. No one can heal him. And that's when things get dangerous. When everybody's got defense down. There you go. So there you go. Stage 18. Now you can use this for stage 18 and 19. Perfectly fine. All right. Now, stage 20. We're going to run it like this. We're going to see how it goes. If it's, if it's a problem, I will consider bringing in Drekstar. But I would like I believe I beat this pretty much how you see it. But... There are times that this can fail. This is a very defensive team that will block a lot of the things that are thrown at them. And Syl is really the key here because she can revive your heroes. All right. But this is a longer fight. It's not very short in any way, shape, or form. But as you can see, it's like only almost the same heroes are usable here all the way through. So just build them, and then when you get stronger, you do the next stage. If as long as you can get to stage 13 in the beginning, the first like one to one to three months, depending on your speed, as long as you're farming 13, you should be fine. You can get a team that's strong enough early on that can farm stage 13 at a reasonable speed. You could probably do it. Now, I'm going to guess anywhere between one and four minutes, unless you're, you know, if you're pulling shards and you have amazing heroes, obviously you're going to be able to do it quicker. But this is just, this is, this is a video for people who are just having trouble and can't win and may or may not. And they might've been playing for a while and they just don't, they just didn't build their heroes. So it's just to show you that you can do these things with any hero, really. It just might take you a little longer. That's all. Which, funny enough, I don't mind. I actually am okay with taking long. That stun hit the perfect time because it stunned the doggies so that they didn't do the reflect damage, which is very nice. There we go. Another dog stunned. Stuns are great for this area to stop the reflect damage. And now they're going to attack the wrong hero. There we go. She got an extra turn. Is she going to... Nope. Yep. She turned it. Got it. I was like, drop that turn meter. So he doesn't reflect damage. He's going to do it now, though. Because these guys are going to decide to do something else. Oh, maybe not. Oh, we got a stun on that one now. This is probably the best case scenario that could happen. They got stunned and their turn meter decreased more than enough to stop them from ever using reflect damage. That has literally never happened. So congratulations, guys. You just witnessed history. At least my history. Let's see if this is going to be another one of my crap videos where I die in Ice Golem. I have, I've died in probably, I'm not going to lie, like probably four or five different videos that I've made with this freaking Ice Golem. And as you saw, it took me 14 minutes to beat stage 21. So there is a huge spike in difficulty from 20 on. So really, at this point, it's just making sure that your team can wipe these ads out before the boss uses anything. So if you can turn meter reduction the boss, that helps too, so he doesn't get any of his big attacks before the ads go up. Done. So now it's just a waiting game and hoping that everything goes in your favor. What we did was, in stage 21, we brought Armager in here. And we slowed the fight down at the beginning, and we block revived both ads so that all we had to do was auto the boss fight. And we were able to successfully beat 21. That's a lot harder, though. Requires a lot more power, requires a lot more damage output, and it also requires you to not get your ass handed to you in the first few rounds before those ads are dead and block revived. I also did not auto it. We, we only autoed the fight after the ads were blocked. All 
But as you can see, we're at four minutes now, and we're not very far ahead here. But also the waves take a while, so I can't really blame it on the boss. It's not really not really his fault, you know. We didn't he didn't know we were coming. That's really what happened. I should just put I should just start a stream where I auto fight these battles. Like the the fights that take like fifteen minutes. And just leave the stream up all night so people can just watch them kill. I kind of like that this dungeon isn't as bad as some of the other dungeons I've done videos on. Like Fire Knight takes a while because you have to do you each, like Fire, Fire Knight and Spider. Each and every fight is like a brand new fight because of the affinities and all that other stuff. This one, not so much just because no one, no one hero is getting targeted. And his, his, Abilities are mildly counterable. Mildly. See, now we're danger mode because both are up still. So he's going to do more damage, but I think we're good to take this last one down. All right. We didn't want that, but we got some smite, so that's good. Hopefully we have a debuff removal coming in, and we do. So we're back to square one. We've got a nice little shield going. That's right. Stun him. Best thing that can happen. Relentless on Sill for the win. So two minutes have passed. As you can see, this is a very long fight. I remember this being long the first time I beat it. Which is why I brought Drekstar in. I think our best time was, what, four minutes or something? We brought Drekstar in because he just happened to do a lot better. Hey, that smite can be dangerous. Because, see, now we have some low HP area heroes. So we might end up getting, you know, killed if that smite goes off at the wrong time. All right, protect is always good. Just kill, kill one of these guys, please. Uh, yeah, he stunned the other one, so that's good. Remove one turn of the debuffs, which is nice. That's bad. I was like, that's bad. See, that's where bad comes in. That defense down was, was not good. All right, they're going to be able to heal back up now. Heal reduction, not good, but... Not unexpected. All right, so hopefully they can at least control the turn meter of these adds. If he gets that attack off with one ad alive, problems will ensue. So we want to make sure that that ad gets killed. At least one. And that debuff was blocked. We have a smite. All right, so he's dead. So that's good. Extra turn. Get rid of that stuff. All right, so her defense down is good. There are no more buffs, I mean debuffs. So there's going to be one more run where we get hit and get another add. I think. The add is stunned, so that's all we needed. I feel like I'm narrating a football game. He could go all the way. There we go. Last one. We survived it. Hopefully nothing goes wrong now. This is a more defensive team. Let's be clear. This isn't a team that's designed to tear this boss down. This is a team that's designed to survive. That's what this team is designed for. They're not they're not going to give you the best time. As you can see, this is a very very long fight. So, if this is just for people who are having trouble and they can't win and they need a team that can beat this. Put it on auto overnight while you farm. Your I promise you your energy will be gone when you wake up in the morning. There you go. Stage 20, Ice Golem's Peak. And we got this sexy piece of gear. Is it garbage? It is garbage. I'm not keeping that. Get rid of it. So, there you go. That is all of the stages. So, I, normally at this point, I would do a recap and kind of show you, like, you know, what 
each stage and what, where things change, but eh, nothing really changes. Up to 13, you can just use Spirit Host and your starter, just level them up really well and bring in your, your you know, in the beginning when you first are getting here, bring in your level 50s that you're using, get as far as you can. And if you can't get further, just stop. Go do something else. This isn't a rush. This isn't a rush to get here anywhere. Once you're at 13 and you can farm this reasonably, there's your six star gear. You don't have to worry about moving forward at all for a while. You don't even have to think about it. Is it the best chances to get six star gear? No, but the, there, there's a chance. That's the point. There's a chance of getting six star gear. You will get five and six star gear. Just farm it. Eventually, you'll get a piece that you need and you'll be good. And then from 15 on, that's when you're going to want to start thinking about bringing in better heroes. The starting five with Apothecary would be a, a reasonable choice to get you through it. They can do it. And then once you get to 18, 19, 20, this is when you're going to want to start considering, you know, better heroes. Someone like Syl, like Drexdar, things like that. Heroes that can really help you out in these fights and get you through them. Because, or a reviver, like Broadmaw, you could bring in here. Like, heroes that can revive and heal are the best option as your secondaries. And then have at least one hero that can remove debuffs. And one can, that can do, hopefully, some kind of a stun or some kind of provoke or anything that can stop the ads from acting so that you don't get the heal reduction and you don't get the defense down. And that'll make your team survive a lot longer because that defense down is ridiculous. And if you can't kill the ads, you may have to fight it the way I did stage 21, which I'm not going to show right now, but you might want to do it where you bring in like Armager and kill the ads in the beginning. It's going to make the fight a ton longer and you won't be able to auto it probably, but it'll get you through the fight if, if you're having trouble. Now, just to kind of see... I'm not going to go crazy on this, showing the heroes, because they're, I think everybody yeah, everybody in this video, I have done a champion spotlight for. So if you really want to see what they're, what they're used for and what you can do with them, then you can check those videos out. But here you go. You got Syl at 45,000 power. She's got the Relentless set on. All of her skills are maxed. We do have her in Brimstone. Masteries are done. Um, Kale, same thing. All his Masteries, if you're interested. Skills max with Phantom Touch. He's got lifesteal gear on, which is your best bet. He does have a defense uh, banner. You may want to consider putting him in accuracy. His accuracy is garbage for this hero. Uh, I would highly recommend getting his accuracy higher for poisons. Spirit Host, she's in the protected bolster set. Use a shield set if you don't have bolster yet to get through the beginning stages. That's fine. Skills maxed with Phantom Touch. She's got all of her masteries done. Uh, support and attack. Very nice. Who else did we use here? Apothecary. He's got all his masteries here. Skills max. He's got the Carapace Blessing just because we want him more defensive. He's got all speed gear. He's the highest speed on my team. He actually has 231 speed, which is very nice. Uh, War Maiden. Yeah, we have her in a speed mix up. I did have her in some attack gear before. We could conceivably switch this to attack gear and then make this a speed boot because I have her in attack boot just because of speed tuning, but it is what it is. Uh, Galek. I'll just kind of show him real quick. He's lifesteal. You can use him in place of Kale. It, I mean, both work. It just depends on how strong one of them is. Skills are all maxed and Phantom Touch. He does have his masteries down to War Master and some support tree stuff. This guy's more of a wave killer rather than a boss killer. And then I think that was all we used in here, right? Valerie, here you go. She's in the bolster set also. We want her making sure she constantly has that shield. It's a nice little buffer for the beginning of the fight. Skills all max, Phantom Touch Blessing. This doesn't need to be Phantom Touch. You could give her a Defensive Blessing if you really wanted to. Uh, support for healing and attack for just that little bit of extra oomph to get her through. And yeah, that's really all the heroes we really used in here. I mean, if you're going to use Drexdar, you could bring him in. But like I said, I didn't want to use one of my top heroes. I wanted to keep it with all the lower end heroes. Uh, especially like, you know, like Yannicka. I think we used in a couple of fights here and there. Drexdar. There are heroes you can bring in here. Like I think we use Visix a couple times. That's she's useful in there because she can do the provokes. Our obviously Arbor can do revival, which is nice. So there are other heroes, but I don't want to show the heavy hitters because I want you to be able to do it with the heroes that are available to everyone. All right. So that's basically it, guys, for today. That is the Ice Golem's Peak. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys can get through Ice Golem's Peak now and you're not having any issues, even though we just did about six months worth of work in about 40 minutes. So yeah, don't get don't get overwhelmed. Don't get don't get 
upset that you can't beat something in a day. All right. That's the main thing. Remember, I'm going to, this is going to be my new, my new slogan. You know, it's Raid Shadow Legends. It's a marathon. All right. It's, it's not a sprint. So this is Ice Golem's Peak. This is Mobile Gamer Nerd. You guys take care.